Hey guys, welcome to the vlog and girls. So I just have a few things I want to cover. It's uh, around one o'clock Friday and I just finished applying the last typographic or typographical or the uh, corrections to the text in the Python course studio web version, the interactive quizzing component. So it's now live and if you did buy the Python pre-release and you downloaded the videos and you want to do the interactive quizzing component, just send me an email. Although I will over the next few days, I'll be sending out an email to everybody so they can sign up if they want to. Uh, so if you bought the pre-release, you can get access to the interactive training if you feel a need for it. So uh, there are 170 quiz questions. And uh, I also added a chapter eight where I got into file manipulation and uh, error trapping or exception handling with Python, just because I thought people might want to see that. With this course right now, it's called Beginner's Python, although uh, I had another name for it, but then it was, uh, I found out it was copy written. Uh, somebody had gotten it or was in the process of getting it. So I decided not to get into a fight. So I said, forget it. And uh, I might call it something else. Anyway, it's a beginner's Python course. Like my other courses, it's really there to establish the foundation. Let me amend that. Like my new courses, it's really there to create that foundation. Because one thing that I've learned over the years, whether it be in Pyth Python programming, JavaScript, uh, any language really, martial arts, business, just app development in general, the key to success in all these things is to have a good grasp of the basic and fundamental concepts. Like when I practice my drumming, most of my work is on keeping time because that's any drummer will tell you, any musician will tell you with any experience, the most important thing that the drummer can do is keep the time. If the drummer doesn't keep time, it just sounds terrible. And so instead of trying to work on fancy patterns and fills and, and rolls and stuff, I work on getting a super hard timing. What you find in drumming is when you start really working on your timing, you, you, you can look at timing as not being a, a single line to be on, but rather two tracks. And timing, you can work and be within time within these two tracks so you can start playing with the way you, you drum and the way you handle the timing in the song. And that's where the feel comes in. So you can really change the dynamics of the tune based on how you play within that uh, timing range, if you will. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And I used to do that actually with martial arts. Every person has a time signature, if you will, every person. So when you're in the ring fighting with somebody and you're, you're sparring, the first thing you're trying to do is you're trying to assess their timing. Because if you can get their timing, then you're gonna destroy them. It's, it's, it's not even an issue. Because if they're, if, they're, if they're beat, if you will, I'm gonna simplify it. I'm gonna simplify this in this example. If their beat is one, 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 two, three, one, one, you know, you can time it. Because if you see, oh, they always move, they're always working on this timing here. So in, in the half beat, when they're just about to throw, they're most vulnerable and you can just go boop and nail them, boop and nail them. And that's where having a very subtle understanding of timing comes in. Which brings me to another principle, something that I picked up a long time ago. The difference between successful apps, successful fighters, successful coders is a mastery of the fundamentals and it's in the nuances. It's in the subtleties and the nuances. I'm sure I've mentioned this in other vlogs. Today, what separates really the successful apps and the not so, so successful apps is UX UI. UX UI is the big part of it. And to really create beautiful UX, excuse me, beautiful UI and very functional UX, UI is user interface and UX is user experience. To create that subtlety and that beautiful experience, and Apple's probably consistently the best at that. Whether or not you're an Apple fanboy or whatnot, I'm just saying I use Windows, uh, Android, I have a Pixel phone, I use, uh, I got Windows 10, I got tablets, I got Mac OS, I got iOS devices. And Apple, 
they really have a nice, there's such a subtlety and a nuance to how their operating systems work, iOS and macOS. That's why they can command such a high price for their computers because even though their computers may seem underpowered spec-wise, in terms of overall experience, it's that smooth experience, that's the subtleties in how the operating system works that makes a big difference. All right, so um, a little dating tip. I'm gonna interject here. I have like four things I wanna cover here. I'm one of these guys that still uses a notebook. So a little dating tip. Um, if you go on a first date and the person you're on the date with mentions their ex, their recent ex, uh, you have a 70% chance that it's not going to go anywhere. So don't take it too seriously. I'm just, I'm just saying, just a little warning. I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous vlog. I forget when I mentioned these things. Just slipping that in. Just slipping that in. If For those of you who may be uh, going on dates, just keep that in mind. Um, yes, once again, the importance of the foundations. That's why my new courses are all foundation courses. Because you have that, the rest comes easy. Um... And I'll leave you with this, since this is really a, a development channel and a business channel, but let's talk about long-term, which what will make your app work long-term. And that's simplification. That's simplification of the code base, that's simplification of the uh, DevOps, that's simplification of the U UX, uh, simplification of UI. That's the key. The difference between the, the true masters and the not so, not so masterful people is that the masters can simplify to such an extreme, to such an extent that it, it just flows. It's like something I remember I heard a long time ago, I was watching Olympics and the commentators were saying, these people are so good at what they do, they make it look simple, though to actually execute as they do at that level of that level of extreme simplicity is extremely difficult. Same thing with app development and code. Always look to simplify your code. Master simplicity and you'll master everything. All right, that's it. I am gonna be celebrating now that uh, the worst part of creating a course is writing all the quiz questions and the inter interactivity. That's done! Over, it's over, it's ready to go. Oh, and it's vetted as well, tested. And so uh, this time around, it went pretty good. Writing quiz questions, any teacher will tell you, by the way, is the hardest part about creating a course, really. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard in the sense that it's like pulling teeth. It's really, it's very mentally draining. Uh, quiz questions have to be well-structured. And, but they're so important to the learning process, so important to the learning process. If and when you do any of my studio web courses, with the interactive quizzing, it, it's just like, pff, I don't know what the, how much better it is versus just videos, but it's significant, it's significant. Uh, anybody who's done the quizzing component, who's done a quizzing course, one of my student web courses with all the quizzing and so on, they will tell you without a doubt, it improved the quality of the course immeasurably. It's just really, really important part about it and I wish it wasn't because I really don't like creating quiz questions. It's a lot of work. But uh, anyway, to celebrate, I think I'm going to head downtown and get myself some chicken and uh, a little bit of exercise at the same time. Have a great weekend.